Don't rush the process. It takes time to trust, to heal, and to regain your strength. It needs the reverence and patience. Don't rush the process. I am Chandresh Bhardwaj, and this is Break the Norms. Namaste everyone, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining the Leela Gurukul social media pages. And those who have not joined, the links are in the show notes. Do join the pages and also sign up on the website leelagurukul.com so that you can get the updates on how to apply for the courses, how to join the community and all other important updates, including the free workshops that I will be doing through leelagurukul.com. And now, coming to the topic for today. Transcending your personality. I'll tell you when I first heard of this concept, it didn't register in my mind. And why would it register? Because all I can remember from my school days, everyone spoke about personality development. As I've shared in previous podcasts, we had just one tiny bookstore in our town and other bookstores were just the school textbook bookstores. This one was the only one where you can find the books which are not, you know, related to school. And that was, of course, my favorite bookstore. Whenever I would go there, there would be books piled up about personality development. And I naturally got attracted toward that because guess what? As a teenager, you feel you have no personality. (laughs) You feel you don't know how to talk, how to walk. You simply start to copy your idols. It could be your father, could be your favorite actors from movies, could be, you know, any fictional character or even anyone around you. You start to copy them. And it wasn't just me. Everyone around me was on the same boat. You know, the boys gang in the high school, middle school, we would all share tips on how to look a little extra cool, how to, you know, really be extra hip, extra, I don't know, extra swag. And that term didn't exist in those days. And now when I speak to the girls from my school, they were all struggling with the same. I mean, in those days, nobody had the courage to even ask the fellow girls that, do you struggle with your personality or in finding your voice because everyone was busy pretending that I know who I am. I figured it all out. You have not figured it out and that's your problem. But my childhood days were all filled up with really trying my best on knowing how I can fit in. And then I saw I was not the only one pretty much 99.9% of people around me were struggling with the same. And as I left the school and got into college, I started observing this in the, you know, fellow kids in my college, but also my, you know, juniors in school, my cousins, and plenty of other people. And now that I'm not in my teens, not in my 20s, and in my early 30s, I clearly see the struggle of a lot of younger generation trying to find who they are, trying to fit in really hard. One thing I'll tell you, this is not abnormal, not unnatural. It's something everyone is struggling with. So do not be super harsh with yourself in case you are struggling with your voice, in case you're struggling with who you really are. The first time I heard about transcending the personality was through the Tantra teachings. Because in Tantra, we define meditation as the death of mind, as an entire sacred transformation where you go beyond the mind. Many years ago, I wrote this poem and uh, I can't find it. I would have shared it on the podcast. It started with Dai, O Yogi, Dai. It was about, you know, a a yogi, a seeker, dying to his old self so that they can embrace the newer self, the newer energy. 
it became very important to me in the past years to really transcend the personality because whenever i look back and i witnessed my deepest struggles those struggles came from this basic illusion of what i wanted to become the becoming was so strong that i forgot about being and i see that happening with so many wonderful lovely people around me that there is so much struggle of becoming that no one bothers about being i've shared that in one of the old podcast that when i left wall street and joined uh, the spiritual field to work i had this pressure to be like my forefathers be like my father my grandfather and my ancestors because there were many people out there who knew about my grandfather and great grandfather and so on and my father is a very active spiritual guru in the south asian community so people know him they love him and there was this immense pressure to build my spiritual work model around him no one was telling me this that you should be doing it it was my own mind putting this pressure on me and i've shared that uh, in many public talks that when i you know eventually started going out to do the talks people who didn't know anything about me they would compare me to deepak chopra and i was like why are you even comparing me to him i mean he's he's a legend in in what he has done and what he does uh and he's deepak chopra because he's just who he is right he's just his own voice and my mind started telling me maybe your poor man's deepak chopra because they cannot invite him but yet you come on a 20 dollar uh you know workshop ticket that's the ticket to your event and in my early years of working that's really what i believed that maybe this is how my work model my brand will unfold to be but as you do more and more work and you start to see the impact of your work you start to gain confidence you start to you know really find your voice and that confidence transforms you and it starts to give you this uh courage to just be you i'm happy to say that i was able to evolve beyond those expectations and perceptions be it the perception of you know of people seeing my father or my grandfather in me or even seeing deepak chopra jay krishna murthy osho pretty much all indian teachers in me and i realized this is just how people think this is how society thinks they need a reference point until you really show up with your absolute courage and you declare this message with your energy that you don't need a reference point to meet me meet me with complete zero blank slate and we'll start from there it took me plenty of years to make that happen but i'm glad it's happening and i'm really enjoying that space now why you need to transcend the personality because what we call personality is basically perception of society on you how society school religion family and many other elements impose plenty of ideas that this is how you should behave if you are born as a woman you are given plenty of ideas on how to behave like a woman if you are born as a man you are given plenty of ideas to behave like a man and if you feel you are neither a man or a woman then you have plenty of new struggles because there is no reference point in their mind so our society creates this very struggling space for people to just be who they want to be and transcending the personality is basically understanding who you are understanding the outside references in you and then going beyond them because personality is nothing but a mask it's a mask by society to please the society to fit into the society but you are much beyond that mask you are awareness you are the infinite awareness and the good news is awareness doesn't have a personality awareness is constantly evolving how many of you have heard that phrase you cannot dive into the same river twice because 
the river is constantly changing but if you look into the whole situation from a tantra or spiritual perspective you'll realize that you are also constantly changing so you cannot dive into the same river twice because you and the river they are constantly evolving and if one of you is not evolving that means there is some stagnant energy happening if you are in your 20s and there are people who know you from 10 years ago 15 years ago and if they're not telling you that you have changed or you are changing then my friend pause observe and witness where is the block why are you not evolving into your new skin and that also applies to the people in their 40s 50s 30s and so on it's a compliment when people tell you you have changed you don't talk the same way you don't even dress up the same way the way you dance has changed the way you listen has changed of course if it's changing into a negative way then of course that's a different conversation but if it's evolving that's why I use the word evolving because evolving doesn't mean you're going backward it means you are moving forward it means you are really tapping into the energy of your courage now how do you translate all of this into a spiritual practice i feel number one thing is the willingness the willingness to destroy your personality if you scroll my social media posts like 10 years ago 8 years ago every other day i used to post this that i am here to destroy your personality i am here to destroy your mind and then there were people who eventually called me and they said you know why in every post you talk about destroying the mind destroying the personality uh, no spiritual person talk like that you should be talking about positive affirmations the peace the bliss the happiness but i think i've always had this wiring in my head that i can never think in that direction the direction of good vibes only i always think and live in the direction of what needs to be destroyed and what needs to be created because destruction and creation they have to go hand in hand i have done things said things years ago which i don't agree with i don't believe in right now and i believe that's a good thing if i'm still stuck to what i've said or done 10 years ago 15 years ago or even you know 3 months ago that means my energy is stagnant it's not moving and evolving in the right direction so don't hesitate to change your opinion to evolve and to admit that what you did or said was not right and now that you know better you will do better so the first thing is the willingness to destroy to go beyond that personality the whole ideas perceptions of what others have you know thrown at you number 2 start to disobey with absolute awareness i repeat disobey with absolute awareness i'm always concerned about the kids who obey blindly coming from indian culture i have seen plenty of kids trying to obey blindly i have been a good kid good son to my parents at least that's what i believe in and many people used to tell me so the reason you don't drink or smoke is because of your father because he's a spiritual guru and your parents are you know very decent good people and are you afraid of your father or are you afraid that what would people say that the son of this great guru is smoking or drinking is that why you never drink or smoke but the answer is i have never done anything based on fear because fear was never part of my upbringing and i've shared about my grandma very often i think she's the one who really became this a uh, first shield of unconditional love around me and she gave me this enough freedom and space that i didn't need to grow in fear and i didn't need to do things in fear and i'm blessed that my parents followed the same pattern the same template I have not avoided things because I'm afraid of someone. I have done things because I wanted to and and I've not done things because I didn't want to. There was no fear involved in it. And when there were things that I feel I need to express, 
and disobey, I have done that as well. But you have to do it with absolute awareness, absolute respect for other person's opinion. You cannot let your ego, your mind call the shots. You have to have absolute reverence for other people's energy too. So this point is all about disobeying consciously. Disobey with absolute awareness. And as you meditate, plant the intention to cultivate courage and clarity. Courage to live your truth and clarity to differentiate between the noise of the mind and the truth of your awareness. And finally, there are two mantras that you can do in meditation and the mantra is mentioned in the show notes as well and you have done that before with me. First mantra is Soham Namaha, which simply means I am awareness. I have found that this mantra is really helpful when it comes to transcend the personality. And second mantra is Aham Brahmasmi, which means I am the extension of universe and universe is extension of mine. These two mantras combined with lessons of courage, clarity, disobeying consciously, and having the willingness to destroy the personality. From today onward, the biggest gift you can give yourself is observing where you are still behaving and reacting based on the past patterns and reminding yourself if there is an opportunity to transcend the personality, transcend the old ideas, the old notions, labels and stories that are still holding you back. If you can start implementing that, even in gentle, gradual ways, then you'll be surprised how your healing and growth will multiply. That's all for today. Speak to you next week. I hope this podcast may travel through the untapped universe of your darkness, light, courage, passion, and so much more. Please do subscribe and be ready to break your norms. I am so excited and very honored to be part of your sacred journey through this podcast.